Hello, I'm Herman Eberhardt, Supervisory Museum Curator at the Franklin Roosevelt Presidential Library and Museum. Back again to talk about the stories connected to interesting and important artifacts in the museum collection. Today I'm coming to you from a very special room here at the Roosevelt Library and Museum. It's a place our museum visitors can only view from behind protective glass, so you're getting a real insider's perspective. This is President Roosevelt's private study. When he created his presidential library in 1941, FDR established this room away from the public museum areas to serve as his personal office where he could work and reflect. From 1941 until his death in 1945, the president used this room as a working office whenever he was visiting his home here in Hyde Park. And he was in Hyde Park a great deal of time during those years. We know that he was here over 250 days during World War II. FDR used this room to conduct government business and receive visitors, including military and political figures and foreign leaders like Winston Churchill. He would also work here with his books and papers. And he made several of his famous fireside chat radio addresses from inside this room. President Roosevelt designed this room to be comfortable and familiar. He selected and arranged the furniture, pictures, and other objects you see here. Many are personal treasures, gifts from friends and relatives, family pieces, or mementos from his travels. They reflect his varied interests, including his love of family history and his passion for sailing and the United States Navy. This historic room remains almost exactly as FDR left it on his last visit here on March 28, 1945. Just weeks later, on April 12, 1945, he died at his retreat in Warm Springs, Georgia. Now, there are many interesting objects in this room that we could talk about, and I hope we can plan other visits here for future video programs. But today, I want to focus on one very special artifact that is connected to a significant anniversary that we are marking this month. And that artifact is this wheelchair used by the president, who was, as we know, paralyzed from the waist down. The story of FDR's disability began 100 years ago this month. In August 1921, FDR was stricken with infantile paralysis, polio. Mr. Roosevelt was 39 years old at the time and a rising political star in the Democratic Party. That August, he was vacationing at his family's summer home on Campobello Island in Canada. On August 10th, he spent a strenuous day sailing and swimming with his children. Tired and feverish, he went to bed early not realizing he was suffering the first symptoms of a polio attack. The attack initially left him almost completely paralyzed. He eventually regained mobility in his upper body, but he was left permanently paralyzed below the waist. Now, given FDR's disability, it's not surprising to find a wheelchair here inside his private study. This specific wheelchair was the one that President used during his frequent visits to the library building. Now you'll notice right off the bat, this is not a typical wheelchair. It's actually one of several that FDR had built to his personal specifications. He had workers cut off the legs of an ordinary wooden chair and mount the seat to a custom designed metal chassis. The overall design and look helped the chair blend into the room, almost like another piece of furniture. Now I should point out here that FDR spent relatively little time in this wheelchair and the other wheelchairs that he kept over at his home here in Hyde Park and at the White House. That's because they were chiefly meant to be a means of transportation between destinations, getting from point A to point B. When he entered a room like this one, he would typically be transferred to one of the comfortable chairs or the sofa that you see arranged here. One other thing that I want to note about the wheelchair is this swivel-mounted device on the side. Anyone want to guess what this is? Well, FDR was a heavy smoker, and he had this swivel-mounted ashtray attached to the chair for his use. Now, a question I sometimes get from visitors here at the museum is, what did the public know about FDR's disability? Well, when FDR was elected president, most Americans had no idea that infantile paralysis had rendered him unable to take a single step unaided. Most people knew he had battled polio, but the degree of his paralysis was less understood. In reality, each day Roosevelt's valet had to help him get out of bed and dress. 
He would move from room to room by wheelchair. Aides lifted him into cars and sometimes carried him into buildings. And when he traveled, advanced teams built ramps and bolted podiums to the floor. The White House imposed rules on how the president could be filmed or photographed. No images were permitted of FDR in his wheelchair, being carried, or being helped in and out of cars. In fact, there are only a handful of known photographs of FDR seated in a wheelchair. And the majority of these were shot by friends or family members and clearly not intended for publication. I think the most striking one is this image of FDR on the porch of his top cottage retreat here in Hyde Park. This February 1941 photo was taken by Margaret Sookley, FDR's distant cousin. He's posing with Ruthie Bai, the granddaughter of Top Cottage's caretaker. You can also see the president's dog, Fala, seated on his lap. Now, despite his disability, FDR did develop a way to stand and even walk short distances when he appeared in public. This required a tremendous amount of physical effort and concentration. But to get to that part of our story, we need to leave FDR's study and step out into one of the museum galleries where we have two other significant objects from the museum collection ready for you to view. Let's head out there now. So welcome back. We are now in one of the museum galleries and I've, we've brought out two important artifacts related to President Roosevelt's disability to show you. As I mentioned earlier, over time, FDR developed a way to stand and walk short distances in public. The first step involved leg braces. FDR could not stand without the use of heavy metal braces like this pair that belonged to him. These braces would be strapped to his legs in these locations here, and then they would be locked at the knees. You can see the device here to do that. This particular set of braces weigh about 10 pounds and were obviously not comfortable to wear. In fact, FDR would generally only use his braces when it was necessary for him to stand on public occasions. Now, the braces would allow him to stand. He could then use a cane, like this one from our collection, to steady himself while he was standing. But in order to appear to walk short distances, FDR had to develop a method of using his cane and a strong companion's arm to support his weight while he pitched his body forward. This required skill, concentration, and considerable upper body strength, which he developed through practice and exercise. He did much of this grueling work at the famous Center for the Treatment of Polio Patients that he established at Warm Springs, Georgia in 1927. At Warm Springs, he diligently built up the muscles of his arms, chest, and torso to help him support the rest of his body. And working with the facility's physiotherapists, he painstakingly developed a slow rocking gait that allowed him to walk short distances. FDR was deeply devoted to the facility he created at Warm Springs, and he spent time there each year for the rest of his life. These two photographs depict him in one of the therapy pools at Warm Springs. And here he is fishing at Warm Springs sometime during the 1920s. You can see his leg braces quite clearly in this photograph. Finally, I wanted to show you this photo of FDR in the early 1930s outside the Roosevelt townhouse in New York City. It really illustrates the strength he had developed in his upper body. You can get another illustration of that strength and a fascinating glimpse of FDR's ability to master making short walks in public in a recently discovered black and white film clip from April 1935. This film clip, which I'll show you in a moment, was shot by an amateur photographer. In it, you'll see President Roosevelt walk out onto the White House portico to greet a crowd of visitors. The film clip is very short and will go by very quickly, but as you watch it, notice how FDR proceeds along the portico with the slow rocking gait he had perfected at Warm Springs. You'll see him gripping the strong right arm of his bodyguard, Gus Jennerich, with his left hand and leaning on a cane with his right as he heaves his body forward from the hip one unbending leg after the other, smiling and chatting all the while as though nothing whatsoever is out of the ordinary. Then when he reaches the balcony rail, Jennerich departs and FDR grasps the railing to steady himself as he waves to his audience below. So let's take a look at this remarkable film.
Now, some of you might be wondering how this film was made, since there were strict rules about filming the president in a way that revealed aspects of his disability. It's possible that the large crowd that had gathered on the White House lawn that day may have prevented the Secret Service from seeing what this amateur photographer was doing. Had they seen that he was filming the president in motion, they would have asked him to hand over the camera and remove the film before handing it back. Now, before we end this program, I want to say a little more about FDR's relationship with the Polio Rehabilitation Center he established at Warm Springs, Georgia, and the vital role he played in the eventual eradication of polio. In 1934, President Roosevelt began using the occasion of his birthday to encourage Americans to hold birthday balls to raise funds for the foundation that operated the Warm Springs Center. These events were held around the nation each year. Then, in 1938, FDR created the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis to both support the Warm Springs Center and aid polio victims around the nation. The foundation urged Americans to send their loose change to the president in a March of Dimes. This button was created to promote the president's birthday ball and the March of Dimes in 1942, the year FDR turned 60 years old. The March of Dimes, as the National Foundation eventually became known, supported the research and development of a polio vaccine by Jonas Salk in 1955 that eradicated the disease throughout most of the world. And all of this, of course, explains why today FDR's portrait adorns the dime. I hope you've enjoyed this program about objects from our collection that relate to FDR's disability. If you want to learn more about his wheelchair, braces and cane, and other objects in the museum collection, I encourage you to take our virtual museum tour and explore our digital artifact collection. Both are available on our website. See you next time.